ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ So now I request our principal sir Dr Suresh Singh Hegadi to welcome the dignitaries. Thank you madam. Good morning everyone and a warm greetings to one and all present here virtually on behalf of the members of Sims family. I am Dr Suresh Hegadi principal of the Soundary Institute of Management and Science. Distinguished to panel members of the today panel discussion Dr. Srishail Angadi Sir, Dr. Parmesh Acharya Bedi Sir, Dr. Murlidhar BL Sir, Mr. Viswas Bopanna Sir, Mr. Anveshi Gutta Sir, Mr. Mahesh Narayan Sir, respected Kirtan Kumar Sir, CEO Soundary Educational Trust, Bangalore, respected Professor N.B. Sigeli Sir, Head of the Department of Pure Science, respected rekha madam head of the department of computer science my esteemed colleagues and my student friends at the outset i feel it is my privilege and honor to introduce briefly soundary institute of management and science soundary institute of management and science is one of the premier institutions of soundary educational trust started way back in 2007 by our beloved chairman sir sri saundarya p manjappa with the intention of imparting quality education producing responsible competent capable students to meet the challenges of a present competitive globalized world and also good human being who are going to contribute to construct a better society to live in The college is affiliated to Bangalore University and offering UG programs in commerce, business administration, aviation management, computer science, pure science, journalism, criminology, forensic science and PG programs in commerce, financial analysis and business administration. The college is accredited by NAC with B+ grade. and it is also recognized by the ugc under section 2f and 12b ladies and gentlemen today we are all assembled here virtually for the panel discussion being organized by the department of computer science and pure science of soundary institute of management and science the very purpose of the today's panel discussion is to provide an opportunity to young minds through open discussions with the esteemed panelists highlighting how they can contribute to the agenda of sustainable development goals by making use of new technology in this regard when we contacted and requested all the above mentioned highly qualified experienced and eminent personalities from the field of science and technology to be the panelist for the today's panel discussion they were very kind enough to consider our earnest request this shows their concern and commitment towards the teaching fraternity and the students community sir 
Today, we are all blessed through your virtual presence and express a deep sense of gratitude on behalf of the members of Sims family for accepting our invitation to grace the occasion. Hence, on behalf of management, faculty, and students, and also on my personal behalf, I extend a warm and a cordial welcome to Dr. Srishel Angadi, sir, Dr. Parmesh Achari, sir, Dr. Murli Dar, sir, Mr. Alveshi Gutta, sir, Mr. Vishwas Bopanna, sir, Mr. Mahesh Narayan, sir. Once again, a hearty welcome to you all, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, now I take this opportunity to extend on behalf of all present here a warm welcome to our beloved, young, energetic, and dynamic CEO of Soundary Educational Trust, Sri Kirtan Kumar, sir, who always wholeheartedly supports and encourages in organizing such kind of events which ultimately benefits the teaching fraternity and the students' community. So once again, hearty welcome to you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, on behalf of members of SIMS family, I take this opportunity to extend a warm and cordial welcome to all the members of a teaching fraternity and students community who have connected themselves virtually on our request to make today's panel discussion a meaningful one and a successful one. Finally, before concluding my welcome speech, once again, I take this opportunity to extend a warm and a cordial welcome to all the dignitaries, all the teaching fraternity members, and all the students who have connected okay, themselves virtually for today's panel discussion. So thank you once again. Over to Sheila Madam. Thank you so much, sir. It was a warm welcome. Now I request Divya Shridi, assistant professor of computer science department, to brief out about the events and to introduce all the guests. Thank you, ma'am. I'm profoundly delighted to take an opportunity to introduce six eminent distinguished panelists to discuss on the theme, role of youth in advancement and adoption of science and technology to meet SDG with us today. I would like to introduce the first panelist, Dr. Shishal Angari, Chairperson of CSI Chapter, Bengaluru, Dr. Srishai is a doctorate in management focused on IT in African con uh, continent. He has 25 years of experience in IT industry, particularly with Tata's. Sir has extensively served both in India and overseas markets across the domains of government, telecom, and banking and finance. He has lived in Africa for over seven years and has a country head, accomplished business growth in nations like Botswana, South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, and Zambia. It gives an immense pleasure to introduce second panelist, Dr. Mulidhar Biel, Professor and BOS Chairman of BCU, Department of MCA, Bangalore University. His area of interest is span parallel processing, e-governance, cyber law, and bioinformatics. He has published articles that offer interdisciplinary respectives of parallel processing and e-governance. E-governance being his specialization, he headed a team which des designed, developed, and implemented centralized admission systems for postgraduate admission in Bangalore University for four years. He has developed the request for proposal for automating all activities for Bangalore University. He acquired postgraduate diploma in cyber law and cyber forensics from National Law School of India University and is presently pursuing LLD, Doctor of Laws from National Law School of India University. Apart from his ongoing interest in curriculum, revisions and syllabus design, he has been a 10K and half marathon runner. The third panelist, Dr. Parameshwit Achari, BD, is with us. Sir is a chair, IEEE Mysore subsection, professor and head in the Department of Telecommunication Engineering at GSSS Institute of Engineering and Technology for Women, Mysore, affiliated to BTU. He was instrumental in establishing foreign university, Malaysia, and also with University of Sanyo, Italy, for research, innovation, and exchange programs. Sir is the Innovation Theory Society Bangalore Chapter 2022 Treasurer and 2021 Secretary for IEEE Circuits and Systems. Sir is also a honorary secretary for IETE Mysore Center, IEEE Student Branch Counselor and Executive Board Member for Technical Institute for Engineers. He was established 14 IEEE student branches and 30 
IEEE student bank chapters across Karnataka. Sir has many scopus journal publications to his credits. He has total 19 plus years of teaching and research experience and he has worked at various positions and places like Karnataka, Kerala and Mauritius. He is organized as rich guide at BTU, Belgavi and currently six research scholars are pursuing PhD degree under his supervision. Another panelist with us, Mr. Anvishi Gupta. He has been a, a TEDx speaker and keynote speaker on sustainability on multiple platforms. His past experience has been with the Price Waterhouse Coopers as a director for Smart Cities Consulting. Today, he is the CEO of Atquist Sustainable Solutions and Chase Services Company on Sustainability and ESG. The fifth panelist with us today is Mr. Vishwas Bopanna. Sir is an engineering graduate with over 11 years of entrepreneurial experience in industries of embedded uh, systems integrations and applied technology. He is also the founder and chief engineer at Obey Innovators, Bangalore. The sixth panelist with us today is a Mr. Mahesh Narayan. Senior Manager in Accenture, Bangalore, Indian Institute of Management, Kolkata. Mahesh is an experienced AI and advanced analytics professional. He has around 18 years of experience in the area of analytics and artificial intelligence. He has delivered solutions for technology platform clients, telecom and high tech clients. He is involved in developing and deploying AI solutions in the area of image, video, audio and text content moderation. He has also worked on customer and sales analytics projects. He has a patent granted in his name and have authored various thought leadership publications. In July 2022, he was awarded the Artificial Intelligence and Analytics Industry Leader Award by 3AI. So we are very fortunate to have a, such a rich profiles in a single panel. Uh, definitely session would be a very interesting and fruitful one. Once again, I would like to welcome all the panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Lina. Thank you for the introduction. So now I would request Dr. Sri Shaila Angadi, Chairman, CSI Chapter, Bangalore, to share his insights about today's topic. Dr. Angadi, I suppose you are on mute, please. Thank you, sir. My apologies. <clears throat> I say uh, thanks, Devashri and uh, Sheila, for your kind introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. At the outset, uh, I would like to thank uh, Sundar Institute of Management and Science Organization, and particularly the senior leadership CEO and the head of the divisions and all organizing uh, team here. Uh, for inviting uh, Computer Society of India and to me to be part of this panelist. Uh, particularly youth conference, uh, what in my view I feel it's very appropriate uh, the topic today, particularly in the present circumstances of uh, uh, increasing unemployment situation. And I'm sure we have a very rich uh, set of uh, skills on the panel. They will definitely share their experiences, their learning from the global as well as the local market, uh, particularly on the uh, adoption of technologies, science and innovations uh, in various areas. Particularly, of course, you have very appropriately aligned to the SDGs, Software, I mean, Sustainable Development Goals, which is very useful because today what is happening is in um, in society, particularly in the student or youth community, I would say, I won't say students, youth community, they have a very fixed mindset. Okay, if you're from the management stream, you have a very fixed mindset. Your technology stream, you have a fixed mindset. You have no idea how to apply your learnings. So from that context, I would uh, very well admire this your program, very uh, thoughtfully designed, saying that, uh, how do we involve youths in advancement of SDGs? What it means is you are from the faculty or you are from the stream of technology and management and there is a user called the sustainable development goals. They, I would call this an users. So it will help you to uh, very properly, you know, architect your positioning or your career so on and so forth. Having said that, I mean, uh, I, I'm not sure who was that uh, uh, Professor Sheila or the Professor Devesh called me, sir, we have some 50, 60 questions. I said, look, 
you should not do is a panel discussion uh, don't don't make it a question answer session i'm sure all the experts will give their views and most of your concerns i mean i, do, I know that there are your concerns you would like to bring the best to your students no doubt in that so i suggested her keep it as a panel discussion people and the experts on the panel will discuss most of the clarifications or the concerns you have will come up automatically on the thing and thanks for that accepting my suggestions so we'll make it as a panel discussions and uh, very well you have identified three topics essentially uh, how where should we go for the information and what are the challenges and the opportunities what exactly should be the role of an a youth uh, in penetrate, penetrating the technologies science and innovations aligning to the sdgs having said that i thought i'll just take i know that uh, the time is of an important here importance here i will take very short little bit to share my experiences or my views on these things first and foremost thing when it comes to hunting the information i mean today uh, the present generation i think unlike me uh, we don't have a challenge for the information there is no dread for the information you just in everything whether you want to food you want to medicine whether you want information as this is just google it ask uh, god google so he will get everything there so so information very liberally available data is lot of data is available go and get all this information particularly as this is uh, from the from the open uh, sources and use it appropriately as an information particularly by validating it having said that it's very important to understand the fundamentals of sdgs basically history of sdgs i mean all of us probably know i mean most of our students or youths know about uh, united nations even it's an organization it's an intergovernment relationship organization formed by all uh, all over the world on this all the countries on this planet who joined together it felt there is a need for us to collaborate it is in short if i have to say is it a welfare association like in our area residents welfare associations we have it's in a global welfare association essentially we realize all the nations realize we should live peacefully and uh, safely they formed somewhere in 1945 year so with a minimum number of members this go went on cooperation partnership etc etc fine having said that it continued till millennium that's a 2000 year 2000 they came out with an uh, uh goals called mdgs millennium development goals where they had only about uh, six goals basically to pursue and work on that essentially they were like you know basic necessities like you know poverty clean water health etc it's just about six and of course they struggled till 2015 and so partly some of them has met some of them not met so on and so forth in 2015 they realized yes keep the uh, millennium development goals and you enhance them so that will further purify and uh, and align to the present, present situations and concerns come out with a uh, larger development goal so that uh, the the development agendas are aligned to the present situation that's how the sdgs came in 2015 and uh, i think all of us must be knowing there are 17 sdgs i think we will not go into that essentially what happened is sdgs they built over at the top of FD, uh, uh, mdgs based on the five pillars essentially the planet people prosperity peace and the partnership see these are the four five pillars and that they came out with about 17 uh, action items i would call the goal for it is a big organization you all know about it every every goal has in a big team to work and interact with the countries so on and so forth so as and is that every 3 years or 5 years i think they publish i mean sure my friends on the panel like pwc is accredited uh, experts they will definitely share a lot of things how this reports comes out etc etc so, right this is just the brief background what is that a youth is required to do particularly want to penetrate or maybe the uh, introduce the new technology or do some innovation which will help uh, the the society in adopting his innovations or technologies or science uh, for the betterment of society what he needs to essentially do is try and understand these reports every 3 years or 5 years i think they even comes out with the reports and look at how is the world progressing but first start with your own nation national uh, development see I, i must mention one more thing in addition to sdg there is an under uh, 
uh, agenda or program or national development program of your own nation. So you should see how is that our NDPs are aligned to SDGs. Okay, that will give a lot of information and a lot of ideas. What is that the society needs? And how is that your technology or where should be your innovation in ensuring that the speedy achievement of the goals? So this is very important in uh, hunting the uh, information, uh, looking for the information, uh, particularly for uh, you know further uh, introduction or penetration of the SDIs. Let me just give an example. For example, uh, of course, leave from 2019 uh, till 2021, thanks to pandemic, of course, there are lots of disturbances happened as disruption happened. If you bar that, what is that example we should do is say, for example, 2015 to 2018, what has happened in end uh, poverty goals? You should look at that. I mean, there was a definitely there was tremendous progress happened worldwide, globally as well as national level also. I mean, just to quote number, I think between 15 and 18, uh, from 10.1 to 8.6, uh, uh, the the improvement has come. 2015, our end poverty level was about 10.1% uh, status, and the declination it's uh, at least a decline by two to three percent. But it is slow growth, but there was a progress. Probably that UN has helped how to roll out the programs in ending the poverty, so on and so forth. The detailed reports will be available uh, to run through by the youths today. I, I, and I'm just uh, telling you those days, as I must share one of my experience uh, in uh, when this Millennium Development Goal came up in 2000. See, the entire uh, nations, developing nations and emerging nations were very keen to look at it. Everybody was looking at UN and World Bank for the funding and make use of their support. Uh, it was for, for me, for my surprise, when I was in 2004, I got deputed to uh, Botswana, this is a nation in South, 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 uh, Southern Africa, uh, continent, uh, in the in, in Africa continent. See, it's a very rich country from the natural resources perspective, but the, the pathetic of living conditions and peace and safety and security was very pathetic. So though the country was rich, it was very pathetic. For surprise, I was, even till I reached there, I was not aware. There's so much of support from India is given to uh, Botswana. For example, for the primary and uh, secondary school, the teachers were from India. I was, for me, it was for a surprise. And the defense uh, group was trained by Indian government. I mean, this is the, this was the situation then in 2000, uh, early 2000. So this is this is how the cooperations and partnership were, took place early days. Today, of course, things are different after SDGs. There's so much of uh, granular level programs, plannings, etc., happening. And some of these things will help you to understand and the look for the information and accordingly see what is the best thing we should, uh, uh, you know, uh, technology is suitable to, uh, to the society or maybe achieving SDGs. And coming to the challenges and opportunities, of course, there is uh, definitely there is no shortcut. Every ch is challenge and opportunities are like a two faces of a coin, you know. And so uh, you have a challenge, definitely there is an opportunity. See, see just to give an example, uh, most, and, most and foremost thing, what is, is important in the understanding challenges and opportunities First of all, let's understand who are the stakeholders of this SDGs. Who are the stakeholders? Lastly, if you look at is a we as in a community and the governments, and uh, next comes is the the economy. See, who, a community when I say it's we ourselves, who are the beneficiaries or users or sufferers, whatever we call. And the governance is largely in a government, which what what I mean by that is essentially what type of policies a nation has, what type of SOPs they have, the SOP is basically standard operating procedures they have, what type of rewards and punishment programs they are conducting. So some of these things are very important uh, to understand uh, from the uh, stakeholders perspective. So for example, what I mean by that, say for example, community of course, how much is the community is aware of certain things? Is, to just, and uh, is it, really imposed by the governance as a government or not, by our policies or standard operating procedures. A simple example uh, is, you know, today in, in our own nation, look at the traffic uh, traffic rules violations. Though there are uh, policies, but they may not be very clear and crystal clear, number one, or they, they're not re really reached to the end, uh, end point properly. 
not everybody is educated. They understand the, the rules and regulations of the traffic rules. We violate extensively. What is happening is that leading to accidents, leading to the crashes, so on and so forth. So similarly, uh, you, you can look at the during uh, uh, during the pandemic, so much of uh, uh, thing happened. So we never had a policies and procedures in place to address the healthcare uh, uh, requirements. So these are the things which should require to be brought to the uh, to the to the notice of community, either by training or by giving them the right technology. So if you look at all these uh, uh, challenges, there are opportunities always. For example, we are given a traffic uh, thing, uh, traffic violations uh, uh, challenge. Is there any way our youths can look at what is that I can bring as a technology? Can I do on some innovation where I can uh, come out with a uh, technology, digital solutions, or maybe science where if somebody is violating the thing, uh, the vehicle itself will guide you. Hey, guy, come on, you are breaking the rules. This is how it's called innovations where the youth has to uh, seriously pursue such things. Or, or, or similarly, you can take some of uh, other examples, basically. Is there any way uh, I can bring in some payment, improved payment mechanism? So this is how the opportunities will come up automatically when you look at the challenge. And the role, of course, is very, very important. Your, uh, youth's role plays a very, very important role. First and foremost thing, the today's youth need to change their mindset. What is happening today is uh, largely the mindsets are very clear. Everything is available on the website, uh, on the internet, world wide web, or everything is a digital. So therefore, I must only learn artificial intelligence 100%. Without that, I won't be able to get a job. I will not be get, having any opportunities in the uh, market. So that mindset, the digital mindset uh, has to slightly change it. It is not that 100%. What is required to today's youth is probably, I mean, about 40, 30, 40% of the uh, the technology, uh, and the technology learnings, expertise, etc. required remaining 60 to 70 percent, they need to hunt uh, its applications. How do you do that? Understand the SDGs, understand its applicabilities, understand its present status, what challenges are they are having. So that is first and foremost thing is required. That means, in short, I'm saying youth should change their mindset and adopt to the application oriented. Uh, the innovation, science, and technologies. And secondly, it comes in a training, training to the community, training to the community from your present innovations, uh, present technologies, or present sciences available. Uh, not only you yourself be a master of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, tools available on the mobile, you train them to their lowest point on the pyramid. So that's what is an uh, important thing. And another important point I personally feel is. Uh, the encourage uh, uh, collaborate with NGOs. You know, UN largely uh, very liberally works with NGOs. Then many NGOs uh, are working on the development programs, which are funded by the World Bank. The STI, our youths in STI, are supposed to interact with NGOs. I'm not sure how many of you would interact. In fact, just last week when I was talking to one of our CSI member in Hyderabad, he was saying that uh, there is an uh, there is a cyber peace NGO. I mean, cyber peace foundation NGO. It is this highly focused on the cyber security, cyber uh, law, cyber protection to the common man. They conduct lots of programs. I am sure if we interact with such NGOs who are into health, who are into agriculture, who are into the whatever. I mean, uh, education. They will give us a lot of ideas. What is lacking, and how do I bring in my technology, science, and innovations? I, I, secondly, in addition to that, even itself, United Nations itself has lots of programs for uh, youngsters. I mean, it was not there when uh, MDB was, MDZ was uh, instructed, I mean, introduced. But now today there's something called YPP. One needs to, youth needs to look at this YPP programs available in the United Nations organizations. Look at that and see how do we participate there in that. I mean, largely, again, in addition to that, we should also change with the organizations like PwC, Accenture. They do lots of research in the area of uh, uh, meeting the goals, the sustainable goals of the society uh, and the, on, this, on, this, on this planet, basically. So look at that. I mean, for example, uh, recently, 
there was an, uh, the gathering happened in Davos. Davos, many of you must be knowing, it's in a, it's in a place in Switzerland where World Economic Forum gathers there, they discuss. And one of the major discussion happened there was, and who are the people participant there? And CEOs, chairmen, and like CEOs of your organization, many other organizations meet there and understand what challenges they have in economics and the social development of their nation. And these are the actual people look at youths. What are the expectations of the, their organizations or their nation's economy and social? They discuss on those. I mean, the, one of the findings came was a large skill gap. And who skill gap they found? In fact, they said that if you are able to meet the uh, skill gap immediately, uh, and it's the that particular task itself would include close to about six to seven billion, uh, uh, sorry, trillion dollar to the global economy. I mean, what it means? Forget about the numbers. What I'm saying here is there's a huge skill gap. What what do you mean by skill gap? See. If one might, one of the youth might ask, what is the skill gap? I'm learning artificial intelligence, I'm uh, Python, I'm learning, I'm learning this programming, that programming, I'm uh, doing a research uh, studies, etc. What is the skill gap? The skill gap is such that as innovation is happening, I need to, I need to update myself. It's not that I, I'm a graduate of uh, 1940, uh, 1973. Uh, I'm still talking about the Newton's and Ketcher class. Okay, that won't help. I need to understand what is its applicability. Does it really necessary? Of course, without that, we cannot do anything. No research will happen. But you need to update to the present level. I mean, today, if, if I can say, I'm not going to use mobile phones for booking my tickets, then I'm outdated. I, I, society don't need me. This generation don't need me. So therefore, it plays a lot of uh, responsible uh, roles. Uh, and it's have a lot of responsibility to them. They should look at that and see how we can. But again, why youth? You might somebody might ask, why only youth? Why not you guys and all? Okay. See, all we know that you, you you are like you know part of the life cycle. You are taking forward the nation or the planet. And it's of course further to you there will be under youth. Okay. So therefore, youth uh, plays in a vital role in uh, uh, introducing the technology, bringing in the right innovations, taking the science to the, uh, the society. And may make sure that our planet is sustainable. So, with that few views, of course, um, uh, uh, I would uh, maybe before concluding, uh, one more point I wanted to say is in many of the nations, small nations like Africa, they have a uh, they have lots of uh, programs, empowerment programs for the youths. Like you know, uh, they reward the pro youths. Okay, youth basically there are two types of rewards. One youth in the build, youth basically for the uh, again the innovations. The person who brings in uh, uh, innovations, he'll be rewarded. Person who uses the innovation is also rewarded. So there are a lot of uh, challenges and the responsibilities uh, is there on the shoulders of youth. And uh, all the seniors are all available to you people. And the industry is available, even is available. And uh, I'm sure you will all take forward. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Sheila. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your insights. So we are very grateful to have you here. So your uh, information was very clear. Hopefully our students will get benefited by this. So next I call upon Dr. Parameshwar Chari, BD, Chair, IEEE Mysore Subsection, to share his views and express about his DG. Uh, uh, Sheila, ma'am, uh, sir has little technical issues. So he said that he'll joining in other the third time. Murlida sir, uh, Murlida BL, chairperson, uh, chairman, BCO, to express his views about SDG. Right, it was an exciting uh, uh, opening remarks by uh, uh, Dr. Angdi. Uh, I think I'll be uh, uh, talking about the role of uh, uh, youth uh, uh, in uh, sustainable science and uh, development uh, activities. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Raika and uh, Soundarya Institute for this kind of invitation. And I think uh, I'm really excited to learn a lot of things from uh, many other, uh, many of my other uh, uh, panelists. Uh, I'll start with a uh, uh, few incidents uh, which I uh, came across in my life. Uh, basically, I want to uh, uh, say a few words about uh, uh, science versus uh, superstition. 
Uh, I come from uh, National College uh, Basavanagudi where uh, I grew up with uh, uh, rationalists like uh, uh, Dr. H. Chan. And I think uh, people like uh, Dr. H. Nasimaya uh, are the ones who actually really uh, motivate uh, uh, youth in any kind of uh, science and uh, development. Uh, the first incident I, uh, incident I would like to quote is the following. I was quite young. I was uh, probably, I think, uh, uh, I was uh, uh, 10, uh, uh, or 10 or 12 years old. Uh, my mother uh, uh, took me uh, for some kind of uh, puja. I think basically she took me to uh, an ant hill and then uh, uh, she was saying that uh, today is uh, Nagara Panchami and then uh, uh, we wish to uh, perform some uh, uh, puja. So we performed uh, all the puja around uh, the ant, ant hill. And I think basically what we were trying to do is that uh, uh, we were pouring uh, milk uh, uh, for the benefit of uh, the snake. I think, uh, I don't know whether uh, snake drank the milk or whatever it is, but uh, we went on performing the puja and then uh, maybe after uh, uh, some time uh, we came back. So that was the first uh, uh, incident uh, which I would like to uh, quote. I, I will uh, talk about this uh, a little later. And the second incident uh, which I was uh, a part of uh, uh, was uh, when I was searching for a piece of land to construct a house in uh, Bangalore. I went around many places in Bangalore and then a lot of uh, people showed me uh, many places. And then strangely, those uh, uh, people who were actually showing me uh, the piece of land, they were saying that, uh, sir, do you please don't choose this uh, piece of land because uh, uh, Agni Mule has uh, grown. And then they used to go take me to some other place and then they used to say that, uh, sir, please don't choose this place because uh, uh, the bathroom is in... Uh, uh, different uh, 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 corner and it was supposed to be in uh, this corner but it is not in this corner and then I was wondering why uh, uh, these people are uh, talking about all these things and then they were saying that no sir this is not good basically because this is not a uh, uh, vastu compliant uh, piece of uh, land uh, and then uh, it, it may not be uh, very good for you now that made me to uh, uh, go through uh, many uh, uh, books uh, basically Vastu Shastra books and I took uh, many uh, Vastu Shastra books and then I started reading Vastu Shastra uh, very religiously. And I think I, the first thing that I would like to uh, say is that the word Shastra means science. Uh, Vastu Shastra means it's basically Vastu science. But what we are believing in a different kind of a, 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 a thing which is not science, basically it is uh, superstition. I, I really seriously started uh, uh, learning about Vastu Shastra and then I learned many things. And then I learned what is uh, Agni Mule, what is uh, uh, Kubera Mule and many other things. And then it is basically based on the strong foundations of science. Because we are in Southern India and then we are uh, basically getting our monsoon from uh, 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 southwest uh, region and therefore and we need we should be very careful about our kitchen in kubera mula the kitchen has to be necessarily in agni mula uh, mule basically because uh, uh, because of the uh, south uh, 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 southwest uh, winds which might uh, uh, blow uh, uh, the uh, the fire and then because basically we were all uh, living in hurt and then therefore I think uh, uh, the uh, Agdi Mula was kept in a different uh, position. The same is true with uh, uh, Kubera Mula where uh, Kubera Mula says our Kubera corner uh, uh, has to be uh, supposed to be in a place where there is a lot of ventilation. Basically, basically because uh, when we grow a lot of uh, grains and then we we were supposed to keep those grains in a place where there is a lot of uh, ventilation and then lot, there is a lot of uh, sun. So in that sense, all these things are uh, uh, based on a strong foundation of uh, uh, science. Uh, so what we are uh, presently going through is uh, some kind of uh, superstition. Now, uh, I, I would like to quote uh, the last uh, uh, incident, uh, which is... Uh, uh, which happened uh, some uh, two years ago uh, or one and a half years ago when uh, the corona uh, was at its uh, peak and then uh, uh, the prime minister uh, called for uh, 
lighting the lamp actually uh, to to act, uh, to uh, uh, to say that uh, to say thank you to all the people who uh, worked uh, in uh, eradicating or uh, uh, controlling the uh, corona but there were a lot of theories about that no? uh, even lighting the lamp and then uh, actually uh, uh, beating the drums and so on and so forth and then there were many theories saying that beating the drums and uh, beating uh, uh, vessels or uh, uh, whatever it is will actually kill corona and so on and so forth so now these three incidents we have to take it uh, uh, very seriously now we have to understand where we are actually heading for or where our youth is heading for are we really uh, believing in uh, uh, the science or uh, we are more into uh, superstition if you look at all these incidents and then i i'm afraid that uh, uh, we are more moving more towards uh, superstition than uh, uh, really understand uh, uh, the basis of uh, science now why i'm saying this is because and if you don't have strong basis of science in a society i do not think we can actually uh, grow now uh, we definitely have uh, uh, sustainable uh, development goals and then we do also have uh, uh, standard operating procedures but somewhere we have to actually inculcate uh, a habit of uh, questioning habit of understanding everything now that's when i think uh, people like uh, uh, dr h narsimhaya and his thoughts are very important for us uh, or for the youth uh, in uh, uh, bringing uh, uh, the youth back to the uh, science uh, stream now if you look at uh, the constitution of india and then uh, uh, the general uh, uh, general backing of uh, the government of india a constitution of india also uh, actually asks for scientific uh, bent of mind uh, it says that uh, people of india should have uh, uh, scientific uh, bent of uh, mind and then uh, people should inculcate in uh, uh, science and uh, technology if you look at that uh, uh, some of uh, one of our uh, former president of india was also a scientist uh, dr abdul kalam was uh, a uh, well known uh, uh, scientist and then he was chosen as uh, uh, the uh, president of uh, uh, india basically uh, uh, for his uh, contribution to the field of uh, uh, science and also uh, if you look at uh, uh, the national uh, science congress the national science congress is headed by uh, the prime minister of india uh, prime minister of india uh, is uh, actually uh, heads the national science congress and uh, then every year uh, the uh, science congress meet is conducted uh, uh, in india and then prime minister is the one who inaugurates and then gives uh, his uh, uh, introductory remarks uh, so india has uh, always tried to promote uh, uh, science and if you look at uh, some of the former uh, uh, science and technology secretaries many of the science and uh, science and technology uh, secretaries were basically uh, uh, the uh, basically scientists so so government of india the constitution of india is also actually promoting uh, uh, science uh, it, it wants uh, the people of india to have a, a scientific uh, a bent of mind but somewhere we are uh, uh, actually uh, losing the uh, 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 losing uh, uh, our science uh, Uh, to superstition so somewhere we we need to get over and then we need to come back uh, to the science uh, to science stream uh, recently if you look at uh, uh, the uh, the the indigenous uh, satellite which was uh, launched was actually developed by uh, students of uh, uh, students of uh, tamil nadu so they developed uh, this indigenous uh, 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 satellite which were, which had a very low Uh, payload and then uh, the uh, the institute uh, like uh, isro launched that uh, satellite and then now the satellite is in uh, the orbit so it's not that uh, uh, we are actually losing our game to uh, superstition but uh, many of uh, uh, our students are really doing very well many of our youths are really doing very well in uh, uh, 
science and uh, technology but that is that is limited so that's that's is that, that's is, that is a concern uh, the number of people who are actually uh, working towards uh, science and uh, technology and the number of people who are actually uh, coming out with uh, uh, indigenous uh, product is uh, limited so that's why i think uh, there is uh, there is a lot of uh, scope for our institutes uh, uh, to bring industry uh, into this stream uh, i wish to say one more thing that like uh, uh, if you look at any of our uh, medical institutes uh, if you look at our medical institutes and if there is a patient initially uh, uh, the patient uh, is actually investigated by uh, undergraduate student and then postgraduate students uh, enter and then uh, he looks at uh, the report of undergraduate students and then he gives his own uh, remark and then there is an associate professor who comes and then he looks at the uh, reports of undergraduate and uh, postgraduate uh, students and then he gives his remarks and finally uh, uh, the head of the department of uh, medicine field comes and then uh, he investigates and then gives his uh, final uh, uh, report or uh, medications now that kind of uh, collaborative work is uh, missing in many of our uh, institutes our uh, undergraduate students do not interact uh, of course uh, it is very much uh, there in uh, uh, institutes like uh, indian institute of science and uh, indian institute of technology but it is not there in uh, the other uh, institutes uh, which uh, which uh, which is which is a large chunk of uh, 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 people like what we need to do is that uh, uh, to inculcate this uh, habit of uh, collaborative work the undergraduate students the postgraduate students and then the teachers should all work in uh, an industry collaborated uh, projects and that's why that's where i think industry has to pitch in uh, for the welfare general welfare of uh, science and technology in india and they need to have uh, they need to establish a, a incubator center in uh, many of our institutes um, so that uh, such collaborative activities are uh, happening uh, and then uh, once such collaborative activities happen uh, i'm sure uh, our youth will uh, de definitely involve themselves more in uh, science and technology uh, projects uh, finally what i uh, would also like to say is that uh, uh, this uh, science and whatever science and technology we are uh, talking and uh, we are uh, uh, involving ourselves in uh, should always be uh, very close to the society i would like to quote uh, one last uh, incident uh, and then i'll uh, close my uh, 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 close my initial remarks uh, my uncle came from uh, uh, a village and then uh, he wanted to uh, get uh, uh, i i told him that look uh, you just come in an auto and then uh, he did not know the address and i did not know how to uh, send a address to him because he is not in uh, whatsapp uh, unfortunately he can only read and write kannada uh, uh, and if you look at many of our uh, uh, website uh, 90% of our uh, uh, content is in uh, language uh, english until recently uh, even uh, the google maps was not in kannada uh, uh, so it was basically in uh, language english so on that day i could not send my address to my uncle and then he could not get uh, auto i could not uh, book ola for him and then even if i had booked ola for him and then he would have not understood what's happening uh, so it, it is very difficult for a uh, uh, large percent of people percentage of people uh, to manage any of our uh, uh, the technological growth uh, so therefore what i would also like to tell my uh, youth is that uh, you please uh, look for projects which are local and then uh, give a solution to uh, the uh, local solution give a solution to the local problems in the local technology in the local native language uh, because uh, uh, only 13% of uh, indians can actually read and write and uh, it's our, it's our responsibility that all of us should uh, look for local solutions uh, uh, indigenous uh, solutions uh, with indigenous technology uh, using our own uh, uh, native uh, language uh, with these remarks uh, uh, i uh, 
uh, I just uh, uh, request the other uh, panelists uh, to share their opinion uh, and then uh, uh, for the general benefit of uh, uh, youth uh, towards uh, science and technology. Thank you, sir. It was really enlightening the youth. Thank you once again for your views. Uh, now I would request Mr. Mahesh Narayan, Senior Principal, IIM Calcutta, to share his views on SDG. Thank you. Uh, it is really an honor to be on this August panel. Uh, and the two speakers before me kind of, you know, really articulated uh, you know, really well about how, uh, and how youth can really focus on uh, really achieving the SDGs. Um, uh, I'm very happy to share my thoughts on the topic, um, uh, which is the role of youth in advancement and adoption of science and technology to meet the SDGs. Uh, I would like to you know, start by you know, understanding the UN SDGs. I'm sure uh, most of you will know it, maybe we can really look at it. And then uh, we wanted to you know, understand uh, what is the role of youth as per UN. I did you know, look up uh, their thought process of what uh, they believe is the role of youth, and uh, maybe we can go through them. And then I kind of get into uh, some of the areas like how can we harness technology uh, for achieving the goals, uh, what are the ways and means, uh, and then maybe uh, do a little deep dive in the uh, in, in some of the use cases. And I would like to focus on the use of AI, uh, uh, AI as a component of technology, uh, given that I have a background in that. Uh, and finally, uh, I wanted to also you know, touch upon how as individuals and, and youth specifically, can really contribute uh, towards SDGs in our daily lives. Yeah, Not only uh, we expect uh, uh, organizations and governments to do a lot of things, but as individuals also we can contribute a lot. So I wanted to you know, touch upon that. Maybe, you know, I can use a few slides to kind of, you know, articulate. Um, maybe let me quickly share my screen. I hope others can see it. Um, let me know if you can uh, see my screen. Can you see my screen? Can somebody respond? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. This. Sure, thanks. So, so let's let me start by you know uh, looking at the goals, right? And uh, all of us know that there are seventeen goals and about one sixty nine targets, right? And 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 they are in different aspects, right? So, right from you know poverty uh, elevation to uh, you know education to hunger to good health, gender equality, right from there to you know. Uh, climate action, water, you know, all of that, right? So I also looked at some research and, and they kind of kind of divide these goals into three buckets. Uh, there are certain goals which are, you know, focused on society, yeah, and, and I've kind of numbered them as well, and certain on economy and, and then a few on environment, right? So this will really, this classification also will help us to see how, how, uh, uh, how we can kind of, you know, address some of these aspects as well. Now, um, I, I and I was, and of course, uh, all of us know that, you know, youth has a big role to play and all of that. I wanted to really, uh, really know uh, uh, the, the uh, why UN thought that, you know, that youth is the, is a forbearer of, 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 of making such, you know, uh, uh, great goals. I mean, how can we achieve some of these, you know, goals that you've set for ourselves? I think, uh, and these are, uh, uh, things that all of us know, but I want to reiterate that I think youth and all of us know we all, all have gone through that age are critical thinkers, right? I think uh, they kind of challenge uh, things uh, whenever they don't feel it, it right. Yeah. And, and, and many times they also really ask questions uh, to us saying that why should we do certain things in a certain way and then all of that, right? So I think uh, because they are critical thinkers, they have a big role. Right, so I think I think uh, my my message to uh, you as youth is that continue to become I mean remain critical thinkers. Right, if you don't agree to certain things, please stand up and ask. Yeah, please stand up and and challenge. I think that is that is very very critical. Second is critical thinkers. Right, I mean sorry, change makers. So you are the you I mean uh, the statistics say that I think youth age from 10 to 24 is about 1.8 billion. And uh, in next few years, you will add another 1.9 billion to it, right? Uh, 
right? So which is which will which will make you a, a substantial segment of the population, right? So you are the change makers. You are there in every household. So you have the power to act and mobilize, right? So youth youth activism has resulted in many changes in societies, right? From our freedom struggle to what not. We all know that you know, the role that youth has has played, right? Third, I think innovators. And in all our homes, you will know that you know the youngest guy is the person who is the fastest to pick up technology, right? And and how? And in fact, one example I wanted to also bring in is that you know we I had a habit of you know carrying uh, paper um, tickets to airports, yeah. And and it was a habit, although I knew that you know you could. Carry the PDF document or the email that I would have got and all that. I had a habit of carrying that. Until one day when my son was asking when we were traveling, hey, why do you need this at all? And 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 he said that you know we have the we have the uh, email, we have the PDF document. Can't we just go with that? And 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 it is just I needed the nudge, yeah. And 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 trust me now I don't and carry a paper at all, yeah. And and. Uh, our our system is such that you don't need uh, to show your ticket, uh, paper ticket anywhere. You just have to show your mobile with the with the relevant document. Yeah. So so, I think uh, be that uh, change bearer, be that person who kind of you know innovates and and also forces or nudges others to also innovate. Yeah. Fourth is uh, communicators. I think. Uh, 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 I think uh, uh, there can't be better communicators than young people, right? And because uh, the fact that you are you are articulate, you uh, you are there uh, in every household. You can you know uh, challenge things, bring out um, that change, and communicate in every community that you that you are, right? So always talk about uh, that the, the changes that we need to make, yeah. And and uh, whenever you see certain things not doing. Uh, uh, going as per the sustainable methods, please stand up and 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 talk about um, how things should be as per the sustainable agenda. Yeah, and and finally, I mean, you are the leaders, right? And all of us you know have been telling this for a long time that you know you are the future and everything, right? So uh, assume that leadership role, yeah, and then and then be the change and 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 ensure that you are taking that leadership. Uh, in everything that you do, right from the school that you are part of, the institution that you are part of, all of you are joining this uh, session through um, uh, uh, a call from your you know, conference rooms or your hall, uh, wherever you see things where you know you can make a difference. Please kind of take a lead, yeah, and don't expect others to you know do it for you. So stand up if if you think that there are a lot of uh, uh, you know plastic around you. I mean, if you want to. Really bring down the amount of garbage or whatnot. Stand up and be the change. Take the lead. Mobilize people around you and 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 make that happen. Right. So I think uh, um, and hence for these reasons, I would believe you are the people who can make this happen. Yeah. We've already maybe I will put myself in a in the in the earlier generation um, uh, bracket, and I would really look forward. Uh, to our youth, which is you, to you know, uh, stand up and, and and create that change, right? And I'm sure, pretty confident that with you uh, in in front, we will for sure, you know, uh, achieve all the goals that we have set for ourselves. With that, I wanted to uh, really get into the, the the point about how can we harness technology, and which is an area which I uh, been working on for some time, all, uh, although not on the SDG front, but But for for various corporate problems, I think the the focus of technology is not very different what we do in organizations, right? Uh, but for uh, sustainability, I think this this stands out, right? So what are the the I, I I look at three roles, right? First is replacement. So how can how can we use technology to really replace things which was done manually? Yeah. Remember the uh, the example that I mentioned about how how the paper uh, uh, use can go and you can just use digital methods. So absolutely the way, right? So how can you kind of use a uh, uh, digital methods to replace uh, a manual process which all of us are used to? And 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 
uh, these days, all of us are used to making payments through Google Pays and Paytms in the world, right? And, and the use of paper cash and others have gone down quite a lot. At least I don't use that anymore. In fact, in my wallet, I'm not carrying any cash. Yeah. And that I have not been carrying for some time now. Yeah. And that's also because of the change that we have, we've all, you know, uh, uh, undertaken. Right. So, so uh, make that happen. So where you're replacing um, a manual process, which involve unsustainable methods by using digital technologies, which will help in, you know, reducing paper, uh, you know, reduction of garbage and whatnot. Yeah. Second is, you know, how do you optimize? How do you rely on technology to make process efficient? Now, um, you know that, you know, by using algorithms, by using uh, technology, we can, you know, uh, do things faster, do things more reliably, with better quality. Uh, and, 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 and those examples are all around us, right? The third is redesign. So how can, how can we reinvent a product or a service? Yeah, so that we create a new business model. Yeah, uh, gone are the days when we would have, you know, um, um, you know, hailed a cab by you know waving hand. Right now we all do it by the two clicks on our mobile. Right, and and also there is a huge movement, especially I'm sure you would relate to it that you know they would always question why do we, why do we need to, to buy things? I mean, do we need to ever? Uh, maybe you know, next generation people may not, you know, buy uh, buy cars at all. So, so um, uh, they would, you know, go for you know um, uh, hiring a cab instead, right? So, and and these days you would see that uh, you know people have a habit of you know uh, you know using a lot of uh, rented uh, things around even in the house, right? I know some people who use uh, you know furnitures uh, in a rented manner. So, so those are all things which will really, uh, of course, uh, uh, create a new business model and also maybe in some way, you know, contribute to, to better you know, environmental uh, methods. With that, I wanted to really look at some use cases, right? So uh, we know, and I wanted to focus on AI because that's the domain that I specialize in. And, and there are some studies uh, which kind of, you know, look at uh, the positive impacts of AI on some of these, you know, uh, SDGs and, and the percentages that you see on top are the amount of impact that you know AI can you know, bring in in each of those areas, and and some of the you know use cases uh, you know talking about cities and public infrastructure, right? So you have already you know technologies which will you know enable better planning, yeah, service delivery, connection, mobility, uh, you know whether it is your integrated systems, smart assets, uh, you know those kind of things. Um, Infrastructure planning, uh, whether it is, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, using technology to, uh, you know, planning infrastructure such that you are creating a minimal waste and, and, and those uh, uh, those things. Climate change and environment, again, uh, improving your understanding uh, of environment, monitoring your environmental issues, uh, uh, um, calculating the, you know, uh, climate change impact. And, and those kind of things can be, you know, effectively done uh, through uh, the use of technology, right? Your air pollution, uh, maybe prediction. Yeah, these days you can fairly predict uh, uh, um, what kind of, you know, uh, pollution you can kind of expect in certain parts of the uh, uh, cities or, or, or states or countries with which you can kind of you know, take some effective actions. Similarly, uh, managing disasters, again, uh, early warning systems, emergency response, disaster replacements, disaster rehabilitation. These are things which can be you know, positively getting impacted with the use of AI. Industry and commerce, very well uh, researched and, and, and uh, area domain where you know, we have seen a lot of use of AI. Uh, and finally, you know, social inclusion. I mean, we can't leave the society aside, right? So whether it is enhancing equity, social welfare, uh, public access, you know, uh, those those things. So, so uh, these are some of the areas where you know we can see a great use of AI. Uh, a little deep dive into some of the uh, maybe deep uh, examples of how AI can really uh, impact. Uh, you know, let's look at uh, crisis response. I remember um, uh, during um, uh, uh, 
uh, your pandemic days, uh, we were always keeping a track of you know how many cases where uh, you were always seeing dashboards of of where uh, things are really bad and where people need attention and those kind of things. So so uh, these are things which can uh, really help uh, achieve better health for for the society, right? Uh, starting from there to education, environment, equality and inclusion, health and hunger, infrastructure, public and social sector, various use cases. Again, uh, the use of AI and technology is to really look at past data, look at how the trends have been identifying the, uh, 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 the potential uh, relationships and, and um, the um, ways and means by which we can, you know, predict the next um, uh, uh, action. Yeah. So uh, uh, by these, you are not only able to plan your your reaction to these crises better, but also you know, help uh, plan uh, better, uh, you know, rollout of 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 methods by which we can you know, achieve sustainability. Uh, uh, I also have some you know, examples of, of of how different parts of AI can can come into play, whether it is computer vision, uh, you know, things like image uh, and object detection. Uh, we've always always seen that you know uh, things like you know detecting fires from you know, satellite imagery. So I I've also looked at uh, you know use cases where we can you know look at cropping patterns uh, using satellite image data, right? Uh, and and those kind of things go in a long way to really uh, you know um, impact SDG in positive manner, right? Uh, natural language processing, speech and audio processing again has a lot of use cases in the social space. Uh, content generation, reinforcement learning, yeah, uh, where you are really helping uh, you know uh, learn uh, uh, in the areas of drug trials or or uh, doing simulations, uh, you know, predicting. Uh, diseases and those kind of things. Yeah. So again, um, a plethora of use cases where uh, AI can be a big help uh, in positively impacting the SDGs. Finally, wanted to really you know, focus on one of the example which I found to be interesting, um, and this is related with uh, wildlife poaching. Yeah. And poaching uh, um, is a big problem, and especially in our country and maybe in other developing countries, uh, in Africa and others, where the, uh, the, the places are huge, right? And you can't man the whole, uh, you know, areas um, uh, in manual methods, right? So uh, uh, there is a lot of, you know, uptake in the use of technology, uh, right from, you know, uh, tracking uh, the, uh, potential, you know, trafficking, yeah? by uh, training the data so you would need to really capture some actual you know instance or actual uh, events uh, and uh, train the data as to how how the patterns of a typical poaching can be detected right from looking at the images uh, in the satellite and looking at uh, a congregation of two people or what they are carrying and, and all of that and then and then annotating that data to 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 uh, say that this image could mean certain certain actions, right? And annotating it uh, innumerable times to help learn uh, the algorithm learn what is potentially happening in that image, right? And then uh, you either you know deploy drone or use satellite images and then collect actual data, right? And, and that would involve a lot of technology where you need to kind of you know integrate the data into a into a central system pass through the data, detect uh, uh, detect anomalies using the uh, training that you did earlier, and then finally uh, really identifying uh, aberrations which need to be acted upon, right? And which can be given to certain people who then can act on it so that it looks like in this area there is a chance of an uh, elephant getting killed and their uh, harms uh, uh, may get poor, uh, and these are potential poachers that you need to be attached, right? So those are uh, ways by which, you know, AI and technology are positively impacting some of the SDG goals that we, uh, that we have set for ourselves. With that, I wanted to really, you know, uh, come, uh, uh, 
finish the uh, presentation by saying that you know not all uh, things are uh, something which the government has to do but certain things we as individuals can also contribute right you know things like donating what we don't use waste less food i think our parents and grandparents have been saying this for ages right uh, of course vaccination education empowering of women avoiding wasting water you know wasting water is an interesting area and i can share what i am doing uh, so of course you know moving uh, to uh, a more bucket bath than a shower bath yeah? and then uh, we also have in our apartment used a uh, nozzle uh, which would kind of you know uh, turn the water uh, flow into a spray which will consume very less water i think uh, uh, one tenth or something like that for for a little percentage but it's just a minuscule of the actual water that uh, we guess get wasted Right, so those kind of technologies goes a long way, and we have seen, and I'm, I'm talking with authority that in our apartment we have been able to reduce at least the water use in the in the in the, um, in the individual houses quite a lot. Uh, energy efficient appliances, uh, creating more job opportunities. I think a lot of you are looking for jobs. Uh, also think about you know, taking up an entrepreneurship as an as an option. Uh, so that you can you know, create more job opportunities for others uh, support always support marginalized and disadvantaged people using a public transport you know cycle so uh, uh, i tried doing that many times and again i should not preach which i don't practice so i have been uh, trying to do this uh, very uh, but i would say not so successfully but i want to really focus on this quite a lot uh, recycle absolutely avoid using plastic try and see if you can use something else plant trees um, i think you know, at least give yourself a target of planting a few trees in a year i think that would do a lot of good for the environment save electricity i think before you print i think i gave an example of i'm not using you know the boarding passes anymore i mean just use the digital digital forms um uh, shop second hand use refilled water bottles yeah i mean don't use one uh, use Use and throw bottles, uh, and of course, uh, reusable cloth bags and things like that, which can you know, reduce uh, plastic consumption. So, so these are things that, as individuals, we can do starting today, if not already. Uh, and I would stop here uh, by saying that, yeah, I think uh, the future is yours, and I'm sure we look forward to you to take the leadership so that we can achieve our goals. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was really helpful to know what is our contribution to SDG. Thank you once again, sir. So next, I call upon Mr. Vishwas Bopanna, Honorable Treasurer of CSI Bangalore Chapter, to share his insights about the SDG and role of youth. Sir, you are on mute, sir. Vishwas, sir. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. It's a very fine day to discuss on a very fine topic. So, firstly, I would like to thank Soundary Institute of Management, plus my fellow panelists, spending their valuable time in listening to this session here. Now, I hope you all realize that as we are speaking, we are utilizing one of the implementations of IT in SDG. This platform, which we are using today, is one of the implementations. If not, we all had to be utilizing our own resources to be present in one particular location to give our thoughts about this session. Keeping this in mind, uh, I would like to mention that how many percentage of people in our country really know what is SDG? What are sustainable development goals? around 30% or 40%, what about the remaining percentage? Is there an awareness among them on what is sustainable development or how we can use sustainable development goals to proceed? I really don't think so. So I would like to start off my short talk here by giving a small example in a simple word about what is sustainable development. Utilizing the resources we have today for our needs by ensuring the same resources are available for the next generation for their needs, in simple words. Now, when 
about today's topic the approach of it or the use of it in sustainable development goals my fellow panelists have already covered a lot of points on this aspect but i would like to reiterate a few points here so there are three approaches uh, like uh, my fellow panelists said which we can use or we can follow to utilize it in a sustainable development goals the first approach would be replacement so what replacement refers to let us say there is a manual process that is running in an organization or an institution or anywhere that you see use it or use technology to replace that manual process into automation now the second approach i would tell you is optimization there is let us say there is a system already in place which an organization or an institution is following how you can help is use it to make it more efficient optimize the system make it more efficient for better results that helps in optimization the third point i would like to iterate here is reinvent or redesign we all know that the whole world is now the transportation of the system of the whole world is built on the wheel the wheel was invented long ago so what you've been what we've been doing is we've been reengineering and reinventing and redesigning the wheel to get today's modern transportation systems but today's reengineering or redesigning must help us to understand how we use one common automobile for multiple people to transport or let us say how we can use one car for multiple people to use to their commute so these are the three main approaches that is replacement optimization and reinvent so there are a lot of technologies that can help in this one is you can put in iot bring in a lot of internet related devices to connect and get data and information from various platforms and collate them and present it and bring out an efficient solution now in a country like us or there may be maybe any nation what are the challenges that we face in implementing these sdgs for example let us say we are a vast country and there are certain government bodies who have been uh, assigned the task of implementing these sdgs now when a government wants to implement these sdgs they are usually diverted by a lot of objectives maybe political objective maybe publicity related objective or maybe implementation related objective wherein they miss out the main point in achieving the sustainable development goals it is not like a corporate organization where everyone works towards profit so the system what we have has to be rectified initially this becomes one of the biggest challenge for us to implement sdg the second challenge what i mentioned earlier was awareness we need people from grassroots levels to contribute towards sdgs and for that we will need awareness we will need quality people to go and explain to them on how sdg can play a role in everybody's life now what in specific if we come to india what i would observe is there are a few factors that impact on sdgs first thing is the population of the country with such a huge population implementation of any goals is a really a big challenge now the second point what i would like to mention here is consumerism there is over consumerism in our country which leads to lack of resources for some areas and due to which we may not have a sustainable approach to what production and manufacturing of goods or things then the third aspect what we have is materialism so materialism here refers to a need or a requirement created not to actually fulfill the real need but it is just a supplement to support your materialistic benefit now how our today's youth can contribute in sdgs by bringing in it so simple way for you all you uh, youths to contribute is look at the 17 sustainable goals that are available in those 17 sustainable goals identify a point or a goal which is of interest to you be it poverty be it education be it hunger be it health identify a uh, field which interests you because without interest you cannot drive it now once you identify that field of interest you plan on what you can do to overcome the issue there 
once you plan that next step is to identify what are the resources you need to implement that thing once you get the resources you need to have how much is the budget that you need to implement that so in today's ecosystem we have a lot of people who are ready to fund if your product if your product or a project is a very viable one so uh, here i would like to conclude my short talk here by uh, mentioning that all your students should come forward and try to identify a problem in the system what you have be it a very small system the way you go to college or let us say the way you come back or the way you order food if there is a system already in place do not worry don't get disappointed try to reengineer it and bring out a better solution by using it so there are a lot of things you can contribute by th- by bringing in innovations So with this small talk, uh, I would like to conclude my ESP. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We are very grateful. Next, I would call upon Anveshi Gutta, CEO, Quest Substantial Private Limited, to share his views on SDG for youth. thank you shila and thanks for having me on the panel uh, uh i think what what's been mentioned with the panelists al- already kind of covers pretty much everything that is under the sun on sustainability what i could possibly bring in and considering the audience that we are targeting here which is the students the youth of youth of the country uh, is an insider's perspective considering where i come from i run an organization that has sustainability as its uh, core services that's the that's the services that we are offering out there so that's the insider's perspective that i'll bring in but before i get there uh, a little bit of a background of where i come from i have my experience in it which is technology and uh, uh, other domains of it and then i have also got, got exposure in the urban development space specifically in the smart cities projects that have taken place in india over the last 6 odd years 6 uh, 7 years uh, uh starting with the smart cities mission so that's the context that i bring in and that scenario the whole idea of sdgs or sustainable development in general uh becomes a lot more uh, significant uh coming back to where i am uh, with what we do i believe what i would really want to start off with is the fact that there is is there first of all a market need for the youth to consider their skills they the skills that they they picking up they building today and shape them towards what we are all referring to as sustainable development uh, clearly uh, being being in the space for a long time the need is there the need is there because there's there's no other way that the planet will survive for your generation to go all the way through in a happy, happy uh, manner uh, the generations be- before you including the one that i belong to have had a, a fair share of their life already so the the inheritance of the planet is with you and because of that very reason you you will see that there's a lot of uh, focus now on uh, sustainability let's say from a public policy perspective sustainability from a corporates and private sector perspective sustainability from an education perspective and probably the reasons why the reason why soundary institute has considered this as a topic for the discussion as well so the market need clearly it's there uh, and that's that's something that i want to underline as much as i can what with that market need i i also remember one of our previous panelists mentioning about the skill gap now that's exactly what i think would be important for you to be aware of uh, where you have you are today uh, as students of your uh, students who are doing a, their graduation you of course come through your the schooling system you are entering into what would soon be your own professional careers uh so you are in that you are at that pivot point where you've seen uh, both sides in in a certain way but you, you probably will explore the professional side a lot more as you go forward but considering the schooling system itself i think there needs to be a shift and fortunately uh, you would have come across or if you even if you have not it's it's a click away look up for what has been announced in 2020 the this is the new education policy that has been brought in by the government for both the schooling system and also the Uh, the higher education system so the including including what you guys are up to today uh, now with that the focus has been on what is called 21st century skills 
so when i say there's a market need the market need is for those kind of skills not not only for the technical skills the the kind of technical skills that are by default expected considering you will be graduating with a certain uh, certain uh, degree soon uh, but more importantly it's from the fact that you are having an all rounded personality to yourself when i say 21st century skills we're talking of uh, learning skills we're talking of literature skills and we're talking of life skills and that's that's the all round ability that is going to be important and specifically so in the context of sustainability of course the other careers it and uh, even you know, manufacturing careers will also need some of those but in sustainability there's a strongest need for that all round ability that 21st century skill uh, skill set that we're talking of so that's that's the way you would want to look at careers as if as you go into uh, your choices that you will make sooner than later on the professional front having said that uh, i believe uh, the gentleman uh, uh, who spoke a couple of time, a couple of people before him for me uh, did mention about a few things that have to also become a habitual change uh, to kind of adopt sustainability and i would say that habitual change that we were talking about should be twofold one is an individual level change which is of course you me anybody on this on this particular panel today and uh, the ones listening in all of us individually can make a change and then there is the institutional change and this particularly would apply to larger institutions public institutions and private institutions and of course educational institutions as well the point being that it's it's a lot more interconnected than what we may possibly think of we may believe so believe that an individual action that i do today may not be such a big deal so do i really have to uh, kind of go through that but if you look at it look at the whole way this is connected and the way we talking of uh, the planet going forward the planet people and prosperity aspects of of everyone out there uh, going forward it's it's all interconnected so we have to of course consider individual change and all of those things that were listed on one of the slides earlier should be under your under your radar if they are not already you may want to consider them and start adopting whatever wherever it suits you but at the same time there's a whole lot of need for institutional change and that's coming out from the government regulations also today so today as we speak uh, the government has passed on a, a, a good bunch of regulations which require corporates to align with sustainability and that's the that's the reason i'm saying there's a market need when there is a law that the government is also already asking a uh, private sector to align with there will of course be a demand to fulfill that need of the law and that fulfillment can only be done by people who know of that subject and that is exactly where i'm saying if you were to look at your skills and the profile you are shaping for yourself you should probably uh, consider these these things in the equation uh, so this there is the those aspects of what is being done from the government in terms of regulatory changes and all there's also the aspect of the private sector having a lot of uh, Uh, i would say the leading companies having a lot of awakening by themselves uh, the these companies have themselves realized that if they were to only look at profit making as their motive they are losing the attention or the interest of some of their key stakeholders whether it is consumers who are now saying we want to buy from brands that are responsible whether it is employees who are saying we want to work for companies that are responsible or whether it is even your other stakeholders like your investors investors are clearly telling them that we will put money into your company if you have clearly accounted for what is called the sustainability uh, 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 this this the whole realm of sustainability the esg space that it's called uh, so that's the that's the way it is shaping up and hence uh, companies are also moving away not moving we're shifting gradually i would say from uh, having their focus on Uh, what is called uh, capitalism to what is called stakeholder capitalism meaning to say they look at other people than just making uh, who are involved in the in their business than just making sales happen and that's that's only happening today let me be very clear with some leading companies but it will translate as we go forward downwards as well so that's the other thing that's happening alongside the regulatory need and which is why i think if you are at a juncture where you're considering your career choices you would want to be aware that there's a lot of demand for these skills today unfulfilled demand today i'll be upfront about it so look at that as a very very clear indication for you to shape your career at the same time when you talk of sdgs in totality uh, 
you should be clearly aware that SDG one and SDG fifteen, SDG four and SDG twelve, SDG thirteen and SDG sixteen are all interrelated. There is no way that you could say one SDG is my focus. Of course, there will always be a leaning some some somewhere. You would say that I think I would want to associate myself with a, a certain SDG and try to do my best in terms of delivering a solution that addresses that need. But while you do that, be aware that you are possibly also having a positive hopefully positive influence on the other sdgs uh, although it may not be so obvious to you and so that's important for you to know it's very the sdgs didn't come out of thin air they were brought out with a lot of thinking around how the world could benefit from action around them uh, there was a reference to this being some sort of a uh, analogy with the residential welfare association and that's exactly what it is if it's a planetary welfare association that we're talking about the planet's welfare isn't about doing one thing it's not about acting on climate change only it's not about poverty poverty addressal only it's not about education only it's all of it together and hence the point about uh, you looking at solutioning looking at coming out technologies and answers to this these problems should consider the systemic approach that sdgs has already ingrained in them so don't look at it as a very pointed requirement only at at, at that at that point in time, you should be aware that there is a uh, an impact that it will have on other SDGs, and I'm again emphasizing hopefully a good positive impact. But there are enough and more scenarios where it's also had a a negative impact, unknowingly so. Over the years, it comes out. So that's unfortunately late in the day. But being aware of it is important. Finally, in terms of career choices, that I I thought I'd probably emphasize up, upon for you for this uh, sake of the audience here. Uh, today, there's a demand for different sort of technology solutions, not just the infotech kind of solutions, which are also in demand, no denying that, but the infotech solutions is one piece of the puzzle. There's demand for what is called clean tech, which is clean technologies. The example to that would be uh, if you were to look at uh, your water management that happens, the, how the water from your sewage systems is possibly entering a lake water body. And how do you address that? Is there a way to address that? Should, can we avoid the lakes being polluted? That's that's the clean tech side of things. That's an example, of course. There's more to it, but that's an example of what clean tech would look like. Can you do something out there? Um, there's a requirement for green tech. Uh, here we're talking about how do you avoid emissions or how do you make sure that the planet is much more uh, greener and healthier just because of the environment that we are living in. And out here, the examples in India specifically is when north of India suffers from that stubble burning and the and the air being polluted. Uh, there's an there's an innovation that has happened very recently, and the the company that did it is from India, and they've kind of got global attention. They're called Takachar. Uh, they've in fact uh, been at COP26, and all of that attention has also come to them. But importantly, they're solving a problem of stubble burning, and rather than go for stubble burning, can there be alternates? And that's the way you should also look at green tech and what you could possibly bring out in green tech. Then there's the climate tech. The fact that we are talking of global warming, is there a way to address global warming with different constituents of the society? And typically I would have said urban society because let's be honest, the problem lies a lot more with urban India than uh, urban setups, not just in India, urban setups in general, than it is with rural setups. Uh, in the urban context, I would have said, uh, what can we possibly do with different segments, whether it's the corporate segment, whether it is the uh, residential segment, whether it is the school segment, what is it that we could possibly do out there with these segments to address the global warming challenge that we have. And that's what climate tech is about. And a lot of this, I'll be, I'll be up and upfront about it, is about behavioral change. And that's why my emphasis is earlier on individual and institutional behavior. So if you crack the code to get that behavioral change going, people have already fallen in line. If people have fallen in line, I think it's then become a people-owned and people-driven movement and not so much about a, a, a government push that is making it happen. Uh, easier said than done, but that's, that's in fact, one of those things, one of the challenges that we are sitting today in the drawing room and addressing uh, within our teams. So, yeah, so that's the other thing on climate tech. And of course, I said infotech is there, analytics and data science. So when you say SDGs is 17 goals, it's 169 targets. How do you know, you as an individual, how do I know, I as an individual and I as a person who's also running an organization, how do I know if my actions, my company's actions, my uh, community's actions are 
having a positive impact to what are the 169 targets in a very very data driven manner not just believing that it is happening there but can we make it lot more data driven and that's where the infotech angle will come to play with the fact that if you can capture data at that level and analyze it it brings out an uh, a very very easy to understand with that you are impacting the sdgs and potentially give you enough guidance and suggestions to correct yourself if you are not doing it right and that's the uh, angle of the infotech that would be the most prominent one as it comes to uh, fulfilling the sdgs through through the solutions so yeah i think that's the broad crux of what i thought would be relevant from a like i said an insider's perspective on sdgs and sustainability uh, happy to kind of take questions if there are anything but uh, yeah that's where i'll probably make it uh, uh, close this close this initial address thank you sir thank you for emphasizing uh, so much on the sdg and the role of youths uh, next i call dr parmeshwar charli bd chair i triple e mysu sub section to uh, emphasize on his views hello sir questions and answers so uh, uh, so questions from a student side um yeah students yeah rashmi are you there Uh, like what are the latest uh, digital technologies that can help uh, improve sustainable de uh, development and what roles can the youth as in we can play using the technologies to develop okay so shri shaila sir hello yeah hi uh, yeah answers like uh, many panelists just mentioned even immediate past uh, uh, dr avinash gupta gupta has mentioned technology information see her question is directly focus on the digital see today is the most and uh, foremost uh, important uh, uh, technology is uh, data data science is booming see when you say data uh, the student has to take data as in a big repository available big repository on top of that now you develop a skill how do i make this huge data which is in a uh, it is it is in a uh, unorganized format make it basically analytical and the best usable form of information okay so data science is is one of the best technology where you people should uh, try and focus it of course artificial intelligence and machine learning are always there and it is not that uh, artificial intelligence is is uh, the technology which is started today 
now we are putting it under the umbrella of digital i mean for your kind information artificial intelligence is there for last two and a half decades only thing it has come to practice uh, of late recently so that's because now its application is increasing extensively now very uh, shortly to answer your question focus little bit again don't get uh, stuck there like uh, i have mentioned in my panel discussion also you were focus and developing skills and this digital technology should be more uh, you know 100% no i have to master the ai you don't have to think and okay i need to do research in ai etc no you need to develop as you require you understand you have a basic knowledge basic degree and the practical experience in the ais and see how we can apply it as you go forward see all these three technologies ai ml data science all these are required in all the 17 sdgs okay only thing like i mentioned in the uh, the initial panel uh, discussion also need to understand where what challenges we have see give an example i uh, in a hurriedly i mentioned an example of a uh, technology use uh, let's say in the your bike itself can your bike become intelligent and uh, it will warn you itself instead of complaining to the police saying that hey look you are doing mistake so how do you do that i mean you need to bring in a technology digital technology where the 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 machine which is sitting on your bike looks at the traffic rules and looks at the present status of the vehicle and complies and to tell you also it will record you and so that when you go back home it will help you to analyze probably if you make an a mistake for three times it will automatically reply uh, escalated to the police department so you are no self uh, self sufficient to uh, discipline bring discipline to yourself there are many things for example this is not only technology i said the reason i said don't only get stuck with the technology is important on the policy side also how we can work with the policy side say for example uh, in in singapore there is a policy uh, certificate for acquiring a car not everybody can buy a car in singapore you know that okay the government has bought a policy it's just not technology once the policy is brought in and you develop a technology or you develop an application using your digital technology how do i help this implementation of these policies so there are many there are many such examples we can you not only digital you need to work very closely like one of my uh, uh, co speaker mentioned it is not just only one goal all the goals are interrelated see you need all the goals to work hand in glove together thank you sir yeah anyone else has question i have a sir i am smita sir what are the challenges and solutions do you face in building the partnership in science and technology efforts sir so may i request uh, anveshi gutta sir uh hello sir sure sure so uh, thank you uh, i think the first and foremost challenge that potentially is out there and i, I think is being addressed hope already is the fact that the system around which the youth are today being nurtured has to also support it uh, fortunately uh, the the education system like i said is changing with the, the new policy that i mentioned Uh, alongside that we see a lot of support like the one that you are currently in uh, in terms of the institutions supporting these ideas and these thoughts uh, there's incubators that are supporting it there's government support that is available to kind of make sure that the youth become the torch bearers i think i think clearly the reason that is happening is because there's no other way that the problem that we are facing can be solved there's no other way uh, i'll i'll clearly put my hand on heart and say the generations before you have not done complete justice for for the fact that uh, we have not really left the planet in a great shape uh, uh, for you to in inherit so we will rely a lot on you and hence the support will always come your way uh, but challenges wise the other challenge that you will have is the fact that you got to uh, now ad address a problem that has never been addressed so it's it's not something this uh, sdgs that we're talking about of course they've been in existence for 5 years there's a uh, there's also uh, there was a mention of ndcs the nationally determined contributions that every country commits to last year in in the cop 26 cop 26 is by by just just to give you a sense it's the it's the coming together of all the countries where they discuss the progress on sdgs that's 
basically what the COP is about. So COP 26 was a conference that was held last year. In that conference, a lot of countries have reframed their contributions, the NDCs that we're talking about. And in that reframing exercise, a lot of emphasis has been put on how youth or how young, uh, 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 the young people, young citizens of the planet should be taking it forward and how can they, they be supported. So it's a, it's a mixed bag. You will have those challenges. But the good part, I would say, if you were to be looking at it from an optimistic lens, is that there's a lot of support system that is kind of coming together, which was not the case easily, I would say, 10 years back. 10 years back, this support system was not there. So that would be the opportunity side of things if you were to explore it. And just to just to add, this is Vishal here, just to add, very particularly today's youth facing a problem in partnership, like uh, Dr. Avinash mentioned, uh, he himself is an entrepreneur. So if you look at, if you as a youth with an, from the STI, if you go to Avinash, he won't say, assume that Avinash is in, a, uh, in an NGO organization. He won't appreciate your AI, ML, and uh, innovations. What is that is required for a youth today is partnership yourself proactively with NGOs who are doing their, uh, their activities to achieve the target. Okay, if I go uh, to an, uh, social organizations, uh, who is working on the healthcare or for the uh, woman uh, learning and woman empowerment? Try and understand what challenges they're facing and how is that your solution, your STI can uh, fit them. Then only your partnership will become easy. So, this is a major challenge today. What is happening is today's youth highly focus 100% on the digital technology, not worrying about the uh, understanding how do I fit them. So, is a partnership challenge is mainly you yourself collaborate. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Jan, you have next question. Anyone has next question? Uh, hello, all. This is Ankit Sharma. Uh, I would like to ask this question that what are the skills and competencies the student must have to be successful in the digital economy? Okay. okay. So may I request uh, Vishwa, sir? So can you throw some light on this? Thank you. So I, I couldn't hear the last part of the question. Was it digital economy, did you mean? Yeah. Can yes, you sir. repeat? Yeah, could you please repeat the question? Repeat the question. Sure, sir. Well, like, what are the skills and competencies the student must have like to be successful in the digital economy? Okay, right. So now, when you refer to digital economy, I'm sorry, I did not get your name, my friend. Ankit Sharma, sir. Ankit. Hi, Ankit. So when you were referring to digital economy, everything runs on digital economy now. All of our 17 goals contribute towards digital economy. And uh, when you mention skills that is needed, firstly, like uh, Dr. Rangadi mentioned, there is a need for you to understand what is the requirement. That is the first point. Understand that there is a requirement on this aspect in this particular goal, wherein you will be interrelatedly contributing to different goals. Now, when you understand the requirement, you automatically come up with a problem statement that this is what is needed. So the skills when you refer to is not really something that is uh, really, uh, how I would like to put it is, you need not have all the skills to implement something that you need. In today's generation, you have a lot of people with varied skills who are ready to collaborate with you to bring out a solution. You have to start thinking like an entrepreneur. Think like an entrepreneur. Collaborate. Let us say you have a good thought process. You know the problem statement. Bring together the problem statement. Understand who can solve this. Let us say if there is an engineer who can develop an application to solve this, get him on your board. Then there is an implementation engineer who can implement this, get him on the board. Then now you require data. There is someone who can collect data for you to, to collaborate this and bring out results, get him on the board. So it all is depending on your problem statement. So the skills that you really need is to understand the problem statement and to think about a solution and then later proceed towards how you have to implement. That's simple. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Next. 
So any questions from student side? Good morning, sir. I am Durga Prasad. Actually, there is a uh, question in the comment box in YouTube. So the question is raised by Nityananda. The question is, though Bangalore is the IT hub of India, why North Indian students get more opportunities than locals and what we are lacking back? Okay. Mm, so I would request Murli Dar, sir. Can you please uh, uh, take this question? I guess uh, industry person is the right person to answer this question. I think <laughs> you should uh, allow an industry person to answer this question. Yeah, sure, sir. So Anvishi, sir. Uh, firstly, I don't even know if that's a trend. I mean, that's a yes. trend that I'm hearing for the first time. I, I believe opportunities are out there. It's about who's probably grabbing it. I, I don't even know if there's a demographic divide in that yes, sense. I, I can't really answer that. Yes. Rika, ma'am, you have something to say? Yeah, I have a small concern. Um, uh, you know that nowadays the uh, students are much engaged with the social media. So these engagement by the youth, um, will the how best we the educators can transform their engagement uh, so that it can be used productively in the real world solutions. Uh, and also, you know, how does that, you know, in what ways that we can um, use our, our methodology that we should adopt so that it can be transferred for the productivity and also it will you know align with the goal of sdgs okay thank you question is clear yes ma'am yeah yeah those who ask the question durga prasad yeah ma'am is it clear yeah ma'am it's clear thank you ma'am yeah any questions i'm sorry uh, sheila ma'am uh, yes, that ma was my question actually <laughs> My question to the panelist is how best as an educator uh, we can divert or transmit from the social media engagement uh, so that it can align with the real world solutions by the youth in implementing the SDs, sustainable Okay. Goals. So I would request Rishayla, sir. Sure. Yeah, it's a very brilliant question, Professor Rekha. <clears throat> Uh, yes, yes. Um, yeah, the reason why we got stuck to social media track, uh, thanks to pandemic. Otherwise, we were actually on the uh, right track uh, till 2018 or 19. Yes, the only way today we can, uh, I can say is, we definitely cannot live without social media. It's a, that's a, that's a fact. Let's accept it. How do you use? social media along with the uh, practical necessities. So, yeah, I agree with you. For example, you people already have part of national education policy it, which addresses the current challenge what you are posing. That addresses essentially what national education policy says is the teaching is now uh, brought down to the practical level. I mean, is the, it basically gives you a guideline, gives you things that the student, once he comes out of the college, he's ready for work, he's ready for the placement, he's ready to put for the production. What does it mean for us? See, what is the difference till uh, uh, my days and uh, today, essentially, is we used to just wish to be syllabus-oriented people. We never have gotten exposure to the, any other practical aspects of it. We never applied our learnings. So that is, is happening, and I think you should, as a teacher, as a trainers, probably you should encourage your... Uh, uh, learners or you even bring in the practice in your teaching deliveries, how do you apply practically? And next comes, but how do you do that? For example, uh, in your college environment, probably you won't be able to do that. Therefore, now, university grant commissions are also saying that uh, through internship you do it. You make sure that your students are engaged in the respective uh, industries or the environment where they can apply based on their interest and the learnings. See, in short, I'm saying that it's a hybrid approach is required. One, social media is required for the data gathering. It could be junk or a useful data, but uh, you, you, you analyze and filter it out to make it proper information and apply that for your practical aspects. 
through the classroom training or maybe uh, linking into the industries uh, apply the practices uh, apply the learnings through practices as we so that's what it is uh, i feel it's a necessary is a hybrid concept is the best concept right now yeah thank you sir thank you for uh, concern about this topic yeah yerika ma'am Yeah, any questions students any anything else no ma'am no, no, no. okay so now uh, i would request reka c hod of computer science department to give her presidential remarks uh thank you madam uh, it was a wonderful session and thanks for the opportunity uh, before i uh, propose my uh, presidential remarks i just wanted to answer the question what uh, durga prasad say uh, i know i am not uh, uh, has a bigger learned uh, has the mulisar and other uh, dignitaries are here but the question was uh, why you know the students of north india gets more opportunity than the students who are being bangalore high tech it was rightly said that your it is no, it doesn't matter that which geographic locations you are from it matters what is your skill set and how best you present your skill set is more important as well as your academic preparations suppose if any student are good at its academic sorry academics or is put as in a potential enough with the skills and is a capable enough in handling the course is capable enough in completing the the multidisciplinary course definitely there is an opportunity irrespective whether is a bangalorean or in any other places so i think i as uh, angri sir was rightly saying that nap policies is more focused on multidisciplinary more focused on skill enhancement program so if you are a skill and if you have trained yourself then definitely there is a platform then definitely there is an opportunity for you so grab the opportunity and again the the student has to be in aware he cannot confine to its own syllabi and he cannot be in his own world he has to look around it and most of us i'm i'm sure that uh, most of us will don't read even the newspapers many days you know that means that there's there's no information gathering from the the beginning of the day just they gather what is there in their curriculum and then they just go to the classes I think if these kind of preparation happens as uh, anmishi um, sir was rightly was telling that the previous generation has not made up their you know the effort or they have not set up the platform rightly for the current generation that is all because of lack of information or lack of grasping the data in the right time and executing so this could be one of the reason why uh, many people being in their hometown are not getting the opportunity and of course the other are getting because they have worked on it so that could be the an answer I, i hope i have justified the questions that were asked by the Durga Prasad, and um, taking about today's session, uh, Hungry Sir started the panel discussion today. And in his, uh, in his uh, you know, in his remarks, he just pointed out that what society needs and how it can be achieved. He also pointed out our million development goals, and also the important programs that need to be planned and executed. the challenges and opportunity what a stakeholder has what the community has to do or what governance has to do and what are the sops that need to be you know followed and implemented sir also was addressing about there should be some partnership programs with the premier institution and other organizations one such being uh, sir mentioned about cyber peace uh, foundation sir with your kind notice uh, uh, i i just wanted to give that last week uh, we had an opportunity to associate with the cyber ps foundation uh, mr narasimha rao and uh, we have done the awareness program for entire college and uh, school students on a uh, true cyber space and uh, our institution is also going on the same line sir and thank you for your advice and also uh, uh, secondly we had a panelist uh, dr mulidhar sir uh, he had shared his personal views and that gave a lot of insight that how best you know you have to think about what is a 
the way we have to think how and how it has to be thought uh, when a problem is in uh, you know need to be faced so he spoke about again uh, scientific innovations and also uh, done by the students of uh, various institutions and premier institutions and also he uh, insisted on the collaborative activities and uh, especially the projects that a student has to take uh, take up so that it have a real time problems and how best a student as a creative mind can you know can come up with the solutions and nextly we have uh, had mahesh sir who was uh, talking about the critical thinking the change make innovators communication leadership and lot more he also told about how the technology is uh, helping us to achieve the sdg goals he also mentioned about various use cases and um, the industrial uh, commerce and how an individual can contribute to the sustainable development by not uh, wasting their water donating uh, recycling and public uh, awareness all these things were been uh, you know pointed in this uh, discussion and um, next uh, we had uh, vishwa bupanna sir uh, where in uh, sir initially started with what exactly the sustainable goals and how you know a student has to uh, uh, adopt themselves with the three major approaches that is the replacement reinvent and uh, redesigning and also uh, he said that the problems are maybe uh, due to over consumptions and materialism and many more and reengineering is a requirement that is what the mayor stress and uh, point in this discussion and later we have uh, anvish gupta sir we are you know a lot of aspects that has to be done through a government and a private uh, policies and regulations to be done companies uh, were actually shifting from capitalism to stakeholder as the sir rightly said and there are a lot of scopes and demand for the skills today and he also pointed on national development council and sdg in totality and he spoke about urban challenges and also sustainability uh thing that uh, one has to take care towards uh, you know youth and also he pointed about how you know uh, as a youth uh, he has to prepare himself not just you know understanding or being aware about what's happening but how best one has to prepare how best one has to make an attempt that uh, now these goals can be attained and also and also has rightly said that we have to set a benchmark or we have to set a platform for our next generation it is not just resource to be utilized but you have to allow the next generation to make use of these resources um so that it will be effectively used so these are the points that uh, you know our panelist have uh, made their remarks and there were so many other points i have just quoted uh, one or two on their remarks and um, at last i would like to tell that today's session was a very very informative i should say it is uh, almost especially for my students i would say that it is an encyclopedia where you had lots of things need to be thought and definitely it has made myself that i should be a critical thinker more critical thinker i should be a person where you know i start my work so that it can align and one word was uh, vishwagupana sir was telling that Uh, the utilization of resource should not should be confined only to our generation we need to create so that it be used for the next generation definitely sir uh, being a elderly person of my students i i would rather use the science and technology for the betterment and also make sure that my entire teaching community my students also will try to work towards these goals and achieve a better place in this earth so uh, at the outset i would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the panelists uh, who have taken their time and with a short notice and with well organizing um, you know they have delivered their views they have delivered their thoughts and they have made us to think and uh, it was such a wonderful and i really don't have uh, the better words to express 
But I extend my sincere gratitude on behalf of Saundarya Institute of Management and Science to Dr. Uh, Angadi sir. And also I'll extend my uh, thanks to Dr. Molidar sir, Mahesh sir, Vishwa Bhupanna sir, and Vish Gutta sir. And also in the absence of Parameshwar sir, as uh, he has to leave because of the, there was a emergency call that he has received and he has notified. It's okay, sir. I think next uh, time we all can again join us. And I extend my sincere gratitude to Sundare, sir, who is uh, there in this uh, panel discussion. Uh, without his support, uh, it was not possible for me to connect all the, the great panelists who have joined it today. And I extend my mm -hmm. sincere uh, thanks to our management, uh, Soundarya Education Trust, uh, Mr. Kirtan Kumar, CEO, and our uh, Bilard Principal, uh, Suresh C. Hegadi, sir, Vice Principal, Shivakumar Ganachari, sir, IQAC, and all the heads of the department of various uh, domains. And my sincere thanks to all the uh, institutions who have agreed. And uh, I think uh, I would like to bring to your notice there were almost uh, uh, 20 to 25 institutions are watching this program because they, uh, the link is uh, shared to them. Only thing is they are watching it with the common link because the phones are generally not allowed in the classroom. So hence they are using their AV rooms and their seminar halls. So and also my sister institution are also having the great opportunity to be a part of this program. So I thank them also. I thank the technical team, uh, Mr. Prasad and his team for supporting us. And the big thank to the Department of Computer Science and Department of uh, PR Science staff uh, faculty members for being a consistent support and making this program a grand success. And thanks to my dearest, dearest students for being a part of this program. And uh, have a good day and thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. So we'll wind up this today's panel discussion. So thank you once again. I really uh, uh, overlaid with all the panelists to share your knowledge among the students. So it was really enlightening us. Thank you once again. Thank you all.